um, to talk. This is the session for the vision and speech API surrounding Harry Potter-esque <laughs> topics. If you're here for the discussion of lounge chairs and leather products, that's a, a different room. Anyways, my name is Yu Fang, and I am a runner. I like to cook. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Yu Fang G, and I'd like to build stuff. Uh, I, I really enjoy operating at the space between hardware and software, so to speak. And I'm a fan of Harry Potter. Now, before we go on, I want to ask, who here has not heard of Harry Potter? Either read the books, seen the movies, both, either. I'm sorry about the feedback. Is there any way we can, where should I stand? OK. Anybody hasn't heard, I, I got to brief you guys if anyone hasn't. One, we got one. Excellent. So in Harry, Harry Potter is a story about these folk kids with magical powers. There's this whole world, and we normal people who are not magical don't have magical powers. And these kids have to go to school to harness their powers. And it's a boarding school. So that means they live there, and they have dormitories. And specifically, their dormitories uh, are locked, right? Because you want to be secure. And these are children. Where should I? Is there anything I can do? to fix this. Does that sound better? All right. Cool. I got a thumbs up. Um, and the paintings at this school are magical, because everything's magical. They talk. They're like movies, but interactive, right? So Harry Potter. And this is what the door to one of the dormitories looks like. There is this lady, and she, she's a pretty spunky lady and has quite the personality. And she guards the door, and she has a passphrase, and she likes to change the passphrase, but that's how you gain entrance. You say your password. You say, GDG DevFest, and she says, OK, and you can enter. And then her painting literally swings in, and the kids can pass through. Uh, so uh, I want to illustrate that with a more direct example. Now, this will depend on whether the sound is working. Is the sound working? The sound does not sound like it's working. Well. Well, let the video play, and I will narrate. So she's saying, wait, wait. And then she, she's seeing one of those like funky pitch things, and then she like, goes really loud to try to break the glass with her voice. Of course, you know, to no avail. This may be for the best, so it doesn't burn your ears. And then she just imagines, she says, look, amazing, just with my voice. And, someone, and then Harry says, Fortuna Major. That's the, the password. And she's like, all right, fine, go on. And you see the door swings in, and, and they're in. So that's the, the little clip on how the Harry Potter version of their you know, security model works, right? Now, if you guys noticed, coming in this morning, uh, Capital One does not have a talking painting to greet you, unfortunately, however fun that might be. But instead, you use security badges. When you go home, you use your keys. Sometimes you have various RFID, or in your hotel, perhaps you insert a key card. On your garage door, you might type in a pin pad. On your bike lock, you spin a lock. If you have a really fancy laptop, you might do a biometric, right? But we still have yet to really have great kind of, uh, kind of interactive security systems that really know who to see. Because this painting, she knows who belongs in that place and who doesn't. Right? So beyond the passwords, she really knows, like, if someone shouldn't be in this dormitory, she won't open up, even if they know the password. And so I wanted to see if we could build something inspired by this. Right? Far be it for me to say that I built the, a painting that can guard a dormitory. So naturally, I used a Raspberry Pi, because Raspberry Pis are what you use to build stuff with hardware. And I needed it to talk, right? Just like the, the lady could sing and, and say stuff. So we added a speaker. I needed some way to see, and I needed some way to hear. And I did some stuff with the cloud, and somehow tied it all together to make a lock system. So this is what it ended up looking like in real life, <laughs> right? I, I, that's obviously just a printed out picture, but um, this is literally a door. It's like, yay, hi. I bought some uh, wood from Home Depot, got a little decorative door handle knob, and then screwed it on. There's a hinge. And you know, this is basically a close up here. 
We got a servo that's hooked to, yes, that is a paper clip, tied to a bolt, right? It turns out that the existing kind of Bluetooth locks on the market um, did not support direct connections to Raspberry Pis. I'm not sure why. Maybe someone can look into that. But uh, what we got here, the servo is wired directly to the Pi, and then the white cable is power, the black cable is audio, the blue is networking, and the black is a USB that goes to the webcam sitting up top. Oh, and that black thing is a speaker. I know it doesn't look like one. It looks like a little mushroom. So, let's see it in action. Now, I've done this demo live before and uh, had it not work on me every time, so, what we're gonna do instead, maybe, maybe the sound is working now. What I'm gonna try doing, okay, so the sound is not working, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna unplug the sound out of the laptop, let it play, and then hold, Ooh, why is it? Right. Okay, let's try that again. Why is it, okay. Apple preview was helpful. Sorry about the shuffling. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up to the computer. Does this full screen? Does anybody know? Hello, hello. Speak friend and enter. Friend is my password. Audio capture. Hope you said the right words. Speech authentication passed. You shall pass. Now let's find how to prove you really are. Prepare yourself. It's picture time. Nice look. Analyzing your picture now. Image authentication passed. Welcome. So, it's not the most, uh, elegant security system in the world. Um, let's see here. This microphone is getting put through the ringer today. Okay, so who wants this in their house? Anybody, anybody sold on this? Do we have any takers? Started, starting the bidding at $100. <laughs> so of course it's not you know, a real security system per se. But it does kind of um, suggest some interesting paths that we can take in terms of security, as well as when we think about how, how could I have built that, right? With traditional systems, what kind of hardware systems, what kind of image processing systems, audio processing systems, um, perhaps even servers on the back end, configuring that hardware, would that have taken, right? if it weren't for Raspberry Pi Cloud, various micro devices, and the servo, and things like that. Um, we just, there's so much that has uh, provided for an ability for us to just really hack away at things and make prototypes rapidly and easily. So I wanna show you, talk about kind of what's, what's going on in there, right? So, oh yes, also when you open the door, that's what it looks like. That's the inside of the Gryffindor common room. So the door does open. So, what I was alluding to earlier about this processing of sound and audio, right? It's something that we kind of take for granted. We all take pictures, then Google Photos lets us see like, oh, just show me pictures of landscapes, show me pictures of selfies. That does work, by the way. If you search Google Photos for selfies, it'll pull up all your selfies, it's great. And you can process sound now, right? When you, you can talk to your phone, you can search with voice, you can type with your voice even. And a lot of that, as, as we saw, um, you know, Yumi was talking about it during the keynote, we, we really just have gotten technology so embedded in our lives now, and sound processing, audio, just this perceptual awareness by our uh, computing devices is something that is kind of taken for granted. And when we stop and think about how could we make something like this happen, that understanding is not widespread or deeply understood by the you know, broad developer community. And so, I guess, broadly speaking, understanding the real world is hard, right? That, that's something that we've kind of known for a long time and continue to kind of chip away at. But I think I wanna 
my argument here is that we have made a, something of a leap in terms of accessibility to the technology that will allow you to do this. So let me show you how we can make that easier. The first thing is I got to get rid of this little clip art of a cloud up here because it just doesn't look super great. So if we replace that with two hexagons, it doesn't necessarily look any better. But one is the speech API, and the other one is called the vision API. And I'll tell you about each one. And you know, based on what I said earlier, you may or may not already have guessed what they might do. So the cloud speech API turns audio into text. Right? And then the vision API turns a picture into text? No, it turns a picture into uh, structured data. Right? It turns it specifically, in this case, to JSON. So it turns it into understanding, which is you know, incredibly useful, but also there's some amount of kind of at first you might say, oh, well, that's straightforward. But then you think, wait, if I actually wanted to do this, it would be somewhat less than straightforward. right? And so going back to the speech API, let's see what we can do with it. Um, <clears throat> it, it does support more than one or two languages. And let's see. I think, yeah, let's, let's go right to the demo. So what I got here is a terminal. And it is smaller than I expected, because this is a really high resolution projector. So props to the team at Capital One for acquiring that. So what I got, what we can do is we can, we can say some stuff to it, right? So I might say, so it loads. Hmm. This is why. Uh, this is the wrong one. That's why. OK. okay. I'm really excited to be here at DC DevFest. Now, DevFest not being an English word might yield. You might, some of you might have peeked and, and saw. So we got ABC Dentist, DC Dentist, PC Dentist. And, and so you know, I, I specifically asked it to give me some alternatives in the API. And the API, you know, there's a lot of different options in there, like specifying that language, that key parameter, uh, but also some interesting alternatives. Uh, now, there's two things I want to point out. Uh, first one, which I think is super nifty, is, OK, so this is the request structure. Um, the, this empty space, black space here, will be appended with a 64-bit encoded um, text of the audio file that gets recorded. But the more interesting stuff up here, we have the language code, we have the alternatives, and if I saved it right, you can give the speech API some context and some phrases for it to be hinted at. This is something that people have asked for for so long, and I'm so happy to be able to tell you about this, because everybody wants to know, well, these great prepackaged APIs are wonderful and all, but I got some special words, or I have words that people tend to say in my domain, right? Because I work in the lumber industry, and people talk about different kinds of trees, right? Elm, and maple, and pine, and spruce. And I don't want spruce to you know, get misunderstood and have someone think that they're talking about a different word. So they can add these words in. So I have the same audio file. I'm not even going to talk to it again, right? Because we want to send the same audio file and see if, and this is the live demo fingers crossed moment, right? I'm going to say that. I'm going to run a different script and not record. And we're going to use that same audio file. But this time in the request, we're going to give that hint. We're going to tell it DC DevFest is something we're hoping to see. And bingo bango, instead of ABC whatever, that dentist, right? Dentist doesn't even, doesn't even show up on here, right? They're all DC DevFest. And that's, that's super awesome. Let's see. Um, also, does anybody speak a non-English language and would like to come on stage and can come up with a short, less than five second sentence to say to the computer? If so, please come up. Please don't all, don't, don't all come up at once. Please, sir. Wonderful. All right. Oh, what language? Hindi. Hindi. Great. And so 
I'm assuming that that is this one. And so what we're going to do is, I looked up the language code, and we want to take away DC dev fest. Are you planning on saying DC dev fest? Sure. Oh, you are? OK. Well, let's leave that in then. And then replace this with some random tabs, apparently. All right, Hindi, India. And then let's come on up. So after I press Enter, it'll start recording pretty much right away. And then, yeah, if you want to lean in and then say your thing. Ready? This will be interesting because we got English mixed in with the Hindi. Right, so we'll see what, that, what it thinks of that. How, how does it look? Yeah. I can't read Hindi, so it's to you. Awesome. Thank you, sir. So that's the speech API. You know, it can turn raw audio, very raw audio, into text and give you some alternatives and let you hint at it. So I won't you know, start listing applications here, but for the most part, you know, it's, it's broad ranging. And I think it, you know, having that easy, like that was all I'm doing in that script. Um, let me just show you one of them, right, is, am I on the wrong? Uh, question about free tiers. We will get to that. And it is very exciting news indeed. So all I'm doing here is first line is recording. Second line is converting to base64. So we still haven't sent any requests. Third line is I'm, I'm uh, copying a file to another name. Third, last, fourth line, I'm moving that base64 encoded text in. And then finally, this is the only call. It's a curl request. It's a rest call to an endpoint. And that's it. So if you can make a web call, you can turn raw audio into speech in 80 languages. And I, mean, I think that's pretty cool. So moving on, right? Harry Potter, we had the speech to understand what you're saying, right? In, that, in the demo, we saw, you know, I said the word friend, and it allowed me in. Because it doesn't understand Elvish, I chose English. And Vision API, right? The, the second piece of that was I was authenticating based on my, um, the fact that I was smiling. Right? It was on my face, specifically my emotion, right? not necessarily my face in terms of recognition. And that's an important distinction. Broadly speaking, the Vision API is Google Photos turned into an API, minus the facial recognition, so that it is not creepy. So security applications, questionable since I can't authenticate with my face, but interesting for a lot of other things. It will label the picture. It'll point out, you know, here's a building, here's, a, here's some water, here's some grass, things like that. It will find landmarks, Eiffel Tower, New York City, Empire State Building. It will pick out logos. And I actually took some pictures earlier outside in the booth, so we'll, we'll play around with that. And um, face, it does OCR with text, and it also does some safe search. Um, let's, let's actually just go straight to doing it live, because I like to live on the edge. All right. So the first picture we have is from earlier today. This is from the keynote. I was sitting in the second tier back there. And we got. Um, what did I call that file? So this is not the raw JSON that comes back. This is just the, um, I, I've cleaned it up a little bit just to make it easier to read. But the, the essentials are there. So these are some of the labels it found. We've got academic conference, audience, convention, auditorium. Pretty reasonable terms. There is a confidence rating there. And then it also finds some text, right? We saw in the image here, you can barely make it out, actually. But if I zoom in. Right, we see some numbers, and it's it's kind of fuzzy. It's you know the lighting's not great. It's a little uh, overexposed, but you know it, it more or less picks it out. It's not meant to be. The Vision API is by no means a cure-all. It's not a magic wand, right? Unfortunately, it's not actually Harry Potter, right? It's not magical, but it is useful for 
certain applications, right? When when the oh, did I, I I lost connection here. This is what I get for fiddling with the cables. Are we no good? No good. My computer flashed. Should I try unplugging and replugging? Sorry about that. Hey, OK. Great. Second picture. Uh, this is some food. Specifically, I, I think that was beef on the plate. I'm not 100% positive. It's definitely some kind of meat, and we got some onions on the side there. So, um, all right, let's just type this by hand. So it's going to send the image up. It's going to do its thinking. And we don't have beef coming back, but we do have food, dish, cuisine, and meat. So that's another example of something where it's not perfect, but it's kind of close. This is me hugging a panda. Obviously not a real panda. So let's see what it thinks. And this, this is, now we're starting to get interesting, right? Because I'm kind of trying to trick it, but not really. Right? So we got giant panda in the first one. <laughs> so it thinks it really saw a panda. It sees, it's a mammal, it sees a zoo. Now what's interesting to me here is that at one point, the, one of these with, you know, these are rated in, in descending order of confidence. Um, it did say something like stuffed animal or like something, some term that was suggestive that it was aware that it was fake. And so, you know, even from present, you know, over time I'm seeing with the same picture, this was taken at uh, Google I.O. in 2014, I want to say. So you can see the, the change over time, which is interesting. And you also see that there's a face annotations, found one. So it'll pick out the faces and it'll pick out the various features on the faces as well as uh, the, the, emotion, the emotional state of the person in the picture. And finally, uh, got to give a shout out to our title sponsor and our hosts here. This is a picture of the table out front, right? The Capital One help desk there. And I mentioned earlier that there is logo detection. So, you know, this doesn't always work perfectly, you know, especially for a picture that's in the real world. This isn't by any means a logo that's coming from, you know, their website. It's not a perfect PNG. It's on cloth. You know, there's other stuff going around in the picture. This is a little bend to the C, right? And so let's go back and see how we did. We got a, a rectangle that bounds the logo. And we got the logo here, Capital One, and it recognized it. And this mid, MID, is actually a link to uh, the Google Knowledge Graph. And so it also put Capital One as text. And the Knowledge Graph is this uh, read-only API. This is my little sidebar. I'm going to have to flip through a bunch of slides now real quick to catch us up, because we already talked about a bunch of stuff. This is a, the Knowledge Graph. And you pass in that MID directly in the URL via a GET request up top here. And it comes back with the information about that entity, right? Whether that entity is a city, a place, a person, well, famous person. I'm not on there. And it gives you some text about it, as well as oftentimes a Wikipedia link, which I don't think I'm showing here. But then you can you know, potentially go on and crawl the Wikipedia page and, and so on and so forth. And so you can get a lot of semantic meaning out of a picture by starting with your picture, going to the Vision API, taking that MID, or taking the text that comes back from it and continuing on with it. I also want to call out that in that picture result, there was also the uh, three faces found here. And it labeled it as presentation. So you know, we, we do see that there were three faces that were facing the camera. And that kind of looks like a presentation, right? Someone presenting from some tables. OK. Moving forward, uh, we talked, I mentioned face detection. This is what uh, the JSON from face detection might look like. It's a lot of information. You get um, roll, pan, and tilt angle. So that's the three-dimensional axis of the face in terms of which way it's facing. So if I'm facing straight at the camera, that's 0, 0, 0. And I got to say, calculating these angles, just, I just can't imagine that's trivial. For, for any kind of image processing system. So 
props for that. You got joy likelihood, right? And you, there's a couple other emotions on there, anger likelihood, sadness, things like that. It marks different features on the face. The right eye, heck, it has the midpoint between the eyes, right? The nose tip. There's, um, I think there's some term for that, that funny space between the upper lip and the bottom of your nose. I don't know what it's called, I'm not a doctor. And things like that, you got an underexposed likelihood, right? If you, just, just that alone, you could crawl through an entire inventory of pictures and just split out exposed properly or underexposed. So the opportunities are many. Now, some caveats. We got a picture of some numbers here, right? These are up close. It's very clear what each of these pictures are about. And I would venture to say that the image API would be able to pick out those numbers without too much trouble. In these pictures, it's also very clear what each of the pictures is about. There's like a main subject. And so when we think about labeling a picture, you know, like that upper left one, I would not want it to return bricks or maybe I would say window, but like sky, right? I wouldn't want sky. Sentiment, it's positive. Oh, the mic's working again. That's unusual. Oh, it's one of these. Okay, it's both of these. Um, you got polarity, magnitude, and then syntax. This is the syntax tree that I promised. So you can take that JSON that comes back, and in this case, it turned it into a nice web thing, but you can take that and turn it into real understanding. Um, let's take a try, try a different sentence here. This was an article in The Atlantic that I, I saw. It was about the um, last dynasty in China. And basically, um, this, this guy, Thomas Child, he took all these pictures of, you know, from the early 1900s of 
when China was still very enclosed and pictures that like you know the world hasn't really seen before. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you can see it picked out the person and, and it labels it, right? You know now that this sentence contains stuff about a person, an organization, and a location. And that can be semantically useful. Similarly, again, sentiment and syntax. And here we got a longer sentence, so the syntax tree is necessarily larger. And so you, you know, can experiment with that um, on your own. It's, it's pretty good fun. And in fact, all of our, um, well, we'll see at the end, all three of them have these web uh, demo kind of things. You know, the Vision API website has this little thing you can click on and drop a picture into it. So if the internet is working, we'll upload this picture of me uh, in Japan holding a gigantic Pikachu because everything's bigger in Japan? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of backwards in a lot of ways, but couldn't, couldn't resist. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for that to upload. And so there's a question earlier about free tiers. Um, free tiers, there you are. Of course, uh, each, all three of them have free tiers. So that's the great news. So you know, earlier we heard about Firebase. You take Firebase, make some requests, store it in Firebase, and you can do the whole thing for free. It's great. Um, thousand requests per month on the Vision API. And that's on each of those six parameters. That's a thousand label requests, a thousand face detections, a thousand, uh, what else did we have? Does anyone remember? No? Sometimes I throw prizes out for that. Uh, logos and landmarks, things like that. Speech API is, uh, it's a r around 60 minutes per month. Uh, the billing after that, it's something in the order of like 0 0.015 cents per like 15 seconds or something absurd like that. It's, it's basically a dollar every 42 minutes, I think is what I, that I calculated to. And then natural language is 5,000 units a month where one unit is 1,000 Unicode characters. So each request can be quite long. Um, and it's not by request, so you don't have to worry about you know, maximizing each request. You can really have each request in the National Language API be for the purposes of you know, what is the semantic meaning of this particular statement. So time is always short, never on our side, but you can continue on from where I left off and check out the resources. Um, Cloud.google.com slash each of the three things, speech, vision, and because natural language is a really long thing to type, NL. Again, you can find me on Twitter at G. Ask me questions, um, chat, and you know, throw weird pictures at me. And to wrap it up, let's see if that giant Pikachu ever uploaded, because uploading giant Pikachus is always a fun thing. So we got my face, and again, you see the face detection there. The giant Pikachu, very likely there's your joy likelihood. You see the roll, tilt, and pan. And what does it think it is? Yes, I am a giant stuffed toy. I am the color yellow. It is plush, it is a mascot, and it is textile. Excellent. Um, it does some color image analysis. For some reason, this picture thinks that it is possible that this is an adult <laughs> picture. I do not know why. Maybe, it may, I'm, uh, perhaps, perhaps. My, my best guess here is nudity. All right, Pikachu's not wearing clothing, guys. Um, I am wearing clothing, however. Now, and, and of course, the JSON response, um, which I don't think I had a chance to show you yet, so it's good that I'm showing you. So this is the face annotations, and you have bounding vertices, and it goes on and on and on. This is all for my one face. If there was another face, it would be another one of those. Oh, this still keeps going. You got all the different you know, likelihoods. And labels that we saw with all those MIDs. And there's your safe search annotation. This part is image properties. You got dominant colors, pixel fractions, all sorts of good stuff for people who love photography and image analysis. And so in this particular picture, there were no logos, there was no landmarks, so you don't see any of that show up in the response. But if there were, they'd be there. And so you know, when, I parse, when you parse through it, you gotta make sure you kinda check for the existence of each, of each one. It doesn't just give it to you and say nothing. It just doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it on, on that note. I'll leave Pikachu up for you guys. And uh, thanks a lot for coming. And if you have any questions, um, I, I want to make the stage available to the next speaker. So you know, find me or find me on Twitter. Um, thanks. <laughs>